Just as the Spanish miners were giving themselves up to the army and their fate, miners in Hungary were winning better conditions with a new tactic, the stay-down hunger strike. Welsh colliers copied the strategy the next year in their fight against the coal company-backed Scab Union. The resentment against the owners had never been more bitter, and the Valley Communists were openly calling the owners fascists. And then there came first as a distant rumbling, and then with the sound of bombs falling, the news that would soon take the place of such small matters as this. Mussolini was loose in Abyssinia. Roll along, covered wagon, roll along. To the turn of your wheels I sing a song. City ladies may be fine, but give me that girl of mine. Roll along, covered wagon, roll along. Soon, two extra verses of Roll Along Covered Wagon were being sung by British children. The first was a bit optimistic. It ran, Roll along, Mussolini, roll along. You won't be in Abyssinia long. You'll be lying in the plane with the bullet in your brain. Roll along, Mussolini, roll along. The other went, Will you come to Abyssinia? Will you come? Bring your own ammunition and a gun. Mussolini will be there shooting bullets in the air. Will you come to Abyssinia? Will you come? For all the intensity of feeling on the South Wales industrial scene, there was, too, a growing sense that many evil issues were interlinked. And if you look at a picture gallery of some of those who had a common sense of purpose, you find the people who organised the hunger marches and the anti-Mosley demonstrations, and with them, a man who was a legend in the valleys, the communist agitator and orator, Lewis Jones. The power and the range of the oratory of the time are qualities which Gwyn Thomas has never forgotten. The great person, the nation of Spain, was waking out of this long, nightmarish sleep, and its spokesman were of the best. These people had a gift that I knew all about because it is something that they shared with the, with the Welsh, the Welsh miner and the Welsh preacher, this ability to take an abstract idea and make it burn in their hands and on their tongues. And time and again on those great meetings in Madrid in the early 1930s, I've seen people like La Passionaria, this remarkable woman from the northern part of Spain, the wife of a miner, very small, with a marvellous voice, but a voice that could cajole at the beginning. And now, friends, you will know that we have suffered greatly in the past, and perhaps our patience is wearing a little thin. And I will tell you an example of how the patience was and it would come out, you see, this great volcanic mass of words, and the people would be totally responsive to every word. And then, back home, of course, when the Civil War started, this great tradition of communication through passion, in words, was continued, because in the Ronda Valley at that time we were very lucky to have a man, many men, but particularly one man, who never failed to remind me of La Passionaria. His name was Lewis Jones, a man of rare ability, novelist, orator, one of the great interpreters of the modern spirit, I would say. He was a blacklisted miner who'd never been able to get back into the pits after the great struggles of the 1920s. There cannot be, in the common people, he would say, this amount of goodness, with this amount of understanding, without its one day declaring itself to the world and making itself known. But in the concentration of his passionate devotion to the idea of change through thought. He was saintly. And during those years of the conflict in Spain, that man went up and down the valleys of South Wales. 
like a great moving piece of mind. It is quite fantastic the way he would do it, from meeting to meeting. He hardly ever repeated himself. There was never a stereotype speech, because he would think in between speeches of what was happening to the lads he knew who had gone out from the valleys and fought and died in Spain, that he would be totally refurbished with images, and he kept on doing this on a very, very sparse diet indeed. And eventually, he died, just worn out. He died, no less certainly, from the results of that conflict, because during the Spanish Civil War, this became the focus and the fire of his life. He might just as well have gone to Brunete and to the Ebro and taken his bullet. Thirty-three Welshmen were going to take their bullets in Spain, many of them in those awful battles in the granite mountains overlooking the river Ebro in southeast Spain, and in the Battle of Brunete, a small town on the central plain near Madrid. 178 volunteered from Wales to fight in the war that's been called the rehearsal for the Second World War. 120 actually got to the front, and even that wasn't easy. When the day came, I took my daughter to bed, and that was about the hardest thing that ever I did, was to leave her there and go. I went to Victoria Station, two big detectives come on to us, and they said, we think you are going to Spain. I said, we are going for a jolly weekend to Paris. The wife was looking for me, so I decided to cut through the castle grounds and get on the bus and I got a road. I didn't want the scene, but I knew I was going and there was nothing going to stop me.